Welcome back everybody, my name is Nick930 and this is a review for the new Doomsday Heist expansion to Grand Theft Auto Online. Rockstar has been delivering huge content updates to their massive online world for several years now, and to quote a friend, it looks like they finally jumped the shark. The Doomsday Heist goes completely over the top with some of the most ridiculous weapons, vehicles, and missions to date. You can now buy flying DeLoreans, submarine cars, jetpacks, and a new underground facility with its own Doomsday button that can rain down fire on your enemies remotely. And hopefully you've been saving up a lot of money in GTA Online because all the content in this DLC is super expensive. So let's start by looking at what's available. There's 9 new vehicles available at Warstock Cash and Carry. First, there's the Avenger that functions much like the Mobile Command Center from earlier this year. The Avenger is essentially an Osprey that can switch from a helicopter mode to a forward-facing propeller mode. It also features space to walk around inside, along with plenty of weapons that can be customized. Then there's the DeLorean, which can be switched into a hover mode and flown around the city, just like Back to the Future. The DeLorean also can be modified to use weapons including machine guns and forward-facing rockets. Then there's a jetpack, a futuristic tank, a Lotus Esprit that can be transformed into a submarine, just like the 007 movie, a big truck equipped with a fire hose and front-mounted cow catcher, a stealth helicopter and stealth plane that can hide from enemy radar, a new off-road truck with machine guns, and a mobile artillery truck that can fire a barrage of rockets from long distance. The vehicles are absolutely ludicrous right now, but I have to say the DeLorean is a lot of fun to play with. Just keep in mind that some of these vehicles require that you own a facility first so you can properly store them. Now, Legendary Motorsport has four new Super and Sports cars available, they all kind of look the same. Uh, Southern San Andreas South Autos has three new vehicles, not really that interesting. And then I drove around to a few stores to see what else was new. We have a few new tattoos, some new face paint available at the barber shop, and a few new clothing options. You can now buy a full scuba suit in a large range of colors and use these to swim underwater infinitely without having to resurface for air. I've wanted this feature for a long time and I'm surprised they didn't put a timer on this ability like the rebreather. You can now theoretically escape the cops by jumping into the ocean and just hanging out underwater without any consequence. Then again, there's flying time machines now, so I guess they don't really care about keeping the gameplay balanced. I walked down to the gun store to see if there was any new weapons, but unfortunately it doesn't appear so. However, if you're using the mobile command center, there should be a new Mark II version of several weapons that will increase their abilities and will likely cost a lot. Which brings me to the big ticket item in this update, the facility. Once again, Rockstar is nickel and diming us by forcing us to buy an absurd property out in the middle of nowhere, just to try out new content. A facility is a new, separate underground bunker that looks like something out of an old James Bond movie. It'll cost you a minimum of 1.2 million to buy one of these things way out in Polito Bay, which can make for some painfully long drives back and forth during missions. The facility itself features a bunch of the same stuff we've already seen before. There's a reception desk so you can get free snacks, a lounge area where you can stand around pointlessly with your friends and watch the same two cartoons, and an obnoxiously long hallway to run through just to get to the only room with purpose at the far end, the heist setup room. Now this heist setup room is pretty cool. It's a small auditorium with a massive rounded screen that shows heist details including a map, surveillance footage for each objective, and status. It's a nice touch and it fits the theme very nicely. The Doomsday Heist works similarly to the original heist, but with a few twists. Firstly, in order to play setup missions, you're now required to either spend $100,000 to source the equipment, or you need to be in a public lobby and work with your team in a prep mission. Now these prep missions are pretty straightforward. They have you stealing vehicles you'll be using for the heist setup, like standard DeLoreans from a rich guy's garage, or breaking into a control tower at the airport to locate a stealth helicopter. But because they're being played in free mode, other players can now interfere and steal your vehicles, using them for their own heist setups. It seems like an unnecessary step, and a sneaky way to keep us in public lobbies so we have to deal with the hackers more and more. Once you complete a prep mission, you can now launch the setup with 2-4 to four players. Unlike the original heist, these setups can now be played with just 2 players if you want, though the missions don't appear to scale back the difficulty at all, and you'll likely have a better time with a full group. What's stupid though is that if you're playing with 2 people, you'll only use 2 vehicles in the setup mission, so why am I being forced to steal four vehicles minimum in the prep mission? Me and my friend had to steal four DeLoreans for a prep mission just so we could use two DeLoreans in the actual setup. The setup missions themselves are a lot of fun and showcase the abilities of these new crazy vehicles. In the first mission we played, I had to sneak into a morgue disguised as a paramedic and steal files off of a computer. After doing so, I had to fight my way outside where my friend helped me escape. 
Next we drove around in DeLoreans, hacked intel from random vans, then switched to hover mode and hacked intel off of boats over the ocean, and a plane as it was taking off on a runway. And finally, we used a stealth helicopter to infiltrate the news headquarters, and had an insane fight inside a massive server farm building that was never featured in the game before. This mission did glitch out on my friend, and he was unable to see any objectives or enemies on his radar, which only made it significantly more difficult. And I hope it was just a one-time issue. I didn't get a chance to play the finales yet, but according to the awards page, there's more than one ending. From what I understand, there's three act finales, and it's unclear if each act includes a collection of setups as well. If that's the case, then this update may actually have three full heists to play, which would be an unexpected surprise. Overall, this update is a great addition to the game and has a ton of worthwhile content. Unfortunately, Rockstar is not even trying to hide the fact that they're out to get your real money. All of the new vehicles, even after completing the missions, cost an absurd amount of money, a minimum of 2 to 3 million each. The required facility doesn't even make any sense. They could have easily just given us a new heist with our standard heist planning board in our apartments. I love the addition of scuba gear and I've wanted the DeLorean to be in the game for the longest time. But I think at this point the game has gotten a bit too ridiculous. There's more military vehicles in the game than there are guns. So if you have a friend that's been playing GTA Online non-stop all this time and has the money to buy all the cool new stuff, then I highly recommend checking this update out. Otherwise, you're likely going to be stuck hoping a random player will invite you to the new heist missions if you want to play with the jetpacks and DeLoreans. As always, I hope this video was helpful, and if you want to see more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe for more reviews posted every week.